Hi, hello, namaste. Welcome back to Needs of Children. We are going to get the information about 9th standard English medium, social science in that geography chapter number 5, land resources of Karnataka. Let's come to the, what are the very important learning points from this chapter. In this lesson, you will learn the important points like the pattern of land use in Karnataka, the importance and types of farming, understand the distribution of the important crops of Karnataka and their production. So these are the very important learning points from the lesson land resources of Karnataka. Introduction for the lesson land resources of Karnataka. Karnataka is geographically well placed. It has varied physical features, soil vegetation, minerals, water and groundwater resources. Even the physical features we are get the information that is Malnad region, Maidan region, coastal plain. Whereas soils, types of soils, black soil, Laterite soil, red soil, olivial soil. Vegetation, in upcoming we are going to get the information about vegetations. Animals and the important minerals. Even water resources we get the information. Ground water resources. Among these, land is the most important natural resource. And even, so it is very essential. Its proper use enables the state's development. Let's come to the, the concept of land utilization. So what is the concept of land utilization? Use of land for various purposes is called as land utilization. Then in our Karnataka, why we are using the land availability? Under this title are included like cultivatable land, forest area, fallow land, land for residential purpose, for the construction of roadways, railways, dams, canals, barren land, land used for grazing purposes, etc. So these are all the land used for, these are all the purpose. But Proper utilization of land is the foundation for economic development. So here how the land it is availability and how we are make use of the land. Among that Karnataka has 19.5 lakh hectares of geographical area. It is used for the following main purposes. Among that the fellow land 9.50%, other uncultivated land 7.20%, the land not available for cultivation 10.20%, forest land 14.50%, whereas this part of area, net area zone 58.10. So this is the availability of land utilization in Karnataka. So let's come to the, the concept of pattern of land utilization in Karnataka. Among that, the first one is called as net area zone. The pattern is that the first concept is called as net area zone. The distribution of net area zone is not the same all over the state. Among that, Gulbarga district has the largest area under the cultivatable land in the state. So, Gulbarga district stands in the first place in the cultivatable land. It is followed by the districts like Vedagavi, Vijayapura, Tumkur, Raichuru, Bagalkot, Ballari, Chitradurga and Mysuru districts. Whereas, 
Bengaluru district has the least net zone area. Among that, Bengaluru stands in the last place because of the widespread urbanization. Even followed by other districts like Uttar Kannada, Dakshina Kannada, Udupi and Kodugu, they have the less cultivatable land. So these like Uttar Kannada, Dakshina Kannada, Udupi and Kodugu, so these are has been covered by forest area and other natural phenomena, natural features. So this is about next net area zone among the districts of our Karnataka. Whereas the second pattern of land utilization in Karnataka is called as forest area. Uttara Kannada district has the large forest area. Now Karnataka, Uttara Kannada has maximum forest area followed by Shivamogga, Chamrajnagar, Chikkamagaluru, Kodagu, Belagavi, Dakshina Kannada, Udupi and Vallar districts have the sufficient large forest areas. However, Vijayapura has the least forest forested area. Vijayanagara stands in the least position. It has very less amount of forest. Even Bengaluru, Bengaluru rural, Raichur, Bidar, Gadag districts have very less forest area. So this is the second point. And the next third one pattern of land utilization is called as land not available for cultivation. So this land is used for cultivation but other purposes like railroads, roads, residences, industry and irrigation projects. So this land is not used for the cultivation but other purpose it land is utilizing. So in the recent times the use of land for such a developmental purposes is increasing for the construction of railroads, for the purpose of roads, residences, industry, irrigation projects and other very important developmental purposes is increasing. Among this concept, among this pattern, Bengaluru urban district stands in the first place. It is followed by Shivamagga, Tumakuru, Belagavi, Bellari, Mysuru and Dakshina Kannada districts. Whereas Bidar district stands in the least position. It is the moderate when compared to other districts. So this is about the land not available for cultivation. And the next fourth one other uncultivated land. Whereas this land use consists of permanent grazing land covered with the trees and grooves. So like a grooves a lang narrow channel is called as grooves. It is found largely in place of Shivamogga, Tumakuru, Kolar, Chikkamagaluru and Chitradurga districts. Whereas it is the very least other uncultivated land in Gadag, followed by Bagalkot and Dharwad district. Such land can be reclaimed and can be used for the purpose of agriculture. So it is not a, a fellow land, it can be converted into as a agriculture land. So let's come to the, the last pattern of land utilization called as fellow land. So land which has not been cultivated for more than two or three years is called as fellow land. One that Kalaburgi district has the largest area as a fellow land. It is followed by Rayachur, Belagavi, Vijayapura, Koppal and Tumkuru districts. There is a very little fellow land in Chikkamagaluru, Kodagu. Mysuru, Uttara Kannada and Udupi districts. 
However, such land areas have increased in these districts. Such land also can be reclaimed, utilized for the agriculture. So, this can be land, we can convert it into as a cultivatable land. So, as a fellow land. So, this is about the pattern of land utilization in Karnataka. So, that is it about today's session. In this session, we get the information about the land utilization, pattern of land utilization in Karnataka. So, in case if you having any doubts related to this concept till now, what we are discussed, you can comment in the comment box, I will solve your doubts. And I will come back with the next video. Until keep watching my channel, thank you, have a nice day. See you in the next session. Bye-bye. Take care.